Hello children. Okay, today we are going to start with photosynthesis chapter. Okay, now as you all know, photosynthesis is the process by which green plants make their own food with the help of carbon dioxide, water, light energy and chlorophyll. You all know that chlorophyll is the green pigment that is found in the chloroplast of a plant cell. Now, so by using carbon dioxide, water, chlorophyll in the presence of sunlight, what is produced? Food is produced. Okay? And that food is in the form of glucose. Okay? Now, plants are known as producers because they produce their own food. You know that all organisms need food to survive. So plants make their own food. And from where do animals and human beings obtain their food? You know, they obtain their food directly or indirectly from plants. Okay. So to define photosynthesis, okay, it is a process by which living plant cells containing chlorophyll prepare their own food with Carbon dioxide, water, in the presence of sunlight. Okay? Now, what is the importance of photosynthesis? Now, there are two importance. Number one, we already discussed. It produces food for all living beings. And next is, you know, the byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. Oxygen gas is released as a byproduct. So, why do all living organisms need oxygen? Of course, for respiration. So, you can say that photosynthesis is a life-giving process. Okay? Now, next, coming to chlorophyll. We all know chlorophyll is the green pigment. And where is it found? It is found in microscopic cell organelles. And these microscopic cell organelles are found in all the plant cells and they are known as chloroplasts. Okay, now coming to the structure of the chloroplast. Now chloroplasts are minute, very tiny oval bodies. It has two membranes. Okay, this is one membrane. This is another membrane. Okay, and... The inner portion, the ground substance is known as stroma. Okay? The ground substance is known as stroma. Understood? So, next, inside the stroma, you will find, okay, thylakoids. Now, what are thylakoids? They are closely packed, flattened sacs. Okay? Something like this. They are flattened sacs stacked one on top of the others. Okay, one on top of the other. They are stacked. Just like, like supposing you take some coins and place them one place them one on top of the other. Okay, so it forms a pile. So each coin is a thylakoid. So here, okay, flattened sacs, they are thylakoids. And this whole pile is known as grana. G-R-A-N-A. It is known as grana. Okay. And then this is interconnected. Okay. This grana is interconnected. Again, another stack, another pile of thylakoids stacked together and there is an interconnection between them. So another connection, okay, another pile, another grana is there in the ground substance. This is the ground substance here. The ground substance is known as stroma, okay. These sacs are known as thylakoids, okay, thylakoids. And we, we have a pile of thylakoids which is known as grana. Okay, it is known as grana. And in between, they are connected by frets. F 
R E T S frets. Okay, so this is a basic structure of the chloroplast. Now, the green colored pigment chlorophyll, it is found in the walls of the thylakoid. Okay, it is found. Now, um, of course, you know that uh, chlorophyll is green in color, but yet I'm just using blue to show you where the chlorophyll is concentrated. It is found on the walls of the thylakoids. Okay, now you know that. Uh, Chlorophyll is a pigment. It is a substance made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and magnesium. Okay. So when we talk about chlorophyll, they must be found on the uppermost surface of the leaves. Because maximum photosynthesis takes place on the leaves. So just below the first layer of the cells. Okay. The first layer you know. Okay. The first layer are the epidermal cells, epidermal cells, okay? And just below the epidermal cells, what do you have? You have another layer of cuboidal cells, okay? These cuboidal cells are known as palisade cells, okay? So chloroplasts are mainly contained in the mesophyll cells located between the epidermis and the lower epidermis. Of course, again, you have another layer of spongy mesophyll cells, okay, concentrated here, another layer, and just below the substomatal space, you have the substomatal space here, this is the lower epidermis, and then there are openings, you know, these openings are known as the stomata through which carbon dioxide and oxygen exchanges between the leaves and the atmosphere and of course transpiration also takes place okay and of course you know in the stomata if you remember i had explained in the class the stomata is made up of guard cells the inner wall it is thicker than the outer wall and when these guard cells, these guard cells also contain chlorophyll. Okay, so during the daytime, they produce food. Okay, so during the daytime, for producing food, it requires water. So usually they are closed. The inner wall is thicker than the outer wall. And when water comes inside the guard cells, to perform photosynthesis, it gets turgid, it gets swollen up and then it starts pushing in the outward direction and then the stomata or the tiny opening will be formed at the center of the guard cells. Okay, now there may be more than 500,000 chloroplasts per square millimeter of a leaf surface. So one millimeter by one millimeter Okay, that tiny surface, I think this is bigger. So, this tiny surface contains more than 500,000 or 5 lakh chloroplasts. And uh, there are 9 different types of chlorophyll. Okay, out of that, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, okay, is the most important and they are the best known. Okay, we have maximum chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B in plant cells. Now remember, chlorophyll is very, very sensitive to light. When I talk about light, I'm talking about sunlight. So if there is too much sunlight, the chlorophyll is destroyed. But again, the formation of chlorophyll also depends on the amount of light that falls on the leaves, okay? So, of course, the uh, regulation of stomatal opening for letting in carbon dioxide, I already discussed, we've already done that in the class also, if you remember, how the guard cells are green in color, okay? So, they perform photosynthesis, anything green in color in plants contain chlorophyll, so they perform photosynthesis, so for photosynthesis, they require water, so when the water comes inside, 
it becomes turgid, the guard cells become turgid and become swollen up. Turgid means it becomes swollen up and in the process when it is getting turgid, since the inner wall is thicker than the outer wall, the tiny opening is created at the center, the tiny hole through which there is exchange of gases and even water vapor escapes out. So of course uh, you know that it is said that transpiration is the price which the plant pays for photosynthesis. That is whenever the stomata is open, when photosynthesis takes place, then transpiration also takes place. Okay, now the opening and closing of stomata. Now there are two theories okay about the opening and closing of stomata the first theory is the potassium ion concentration theory now according to the recent this is the most recent one okay now potassium ion concentration theory the stomatal opening and closing okay the opening and closing of stomata the stomata is closed because it is flaccid because there is no water in the stomata but what happens when the stomata becomes turgid, when it gets filled with water, then what will happen? This stomata will open. Okay, because the inner wall is thicker than the outer wall. So, the stomata opens. So, this is flaccid, this is turgid. Okay, this is at night and this is during the daytime when photosynthesis sets in. So, the first theory... Potassium ion concentration theory, okay, so it says that the opening and closing of stomata depends on the potassium ion concentration, okay, potassium ion concentration. Now, during the daytime, the chloroplasts in the guard cells, okay, they perform photosynthesis, okay, and during photosynthesis, energy is produced, adenosine, triphosphate, Okay, now this adenosine triphosphate, if you remember active transport, ATP of the cells is used for active transport. So potassium must get inside the stomata and to get inside it uses ATP. Okay, uh, so the ATP is used to actively pump the potassium ion of the adjacent cells into the guard cells. Now of course these um, uh, guard cells get their potassium from the cells which is around it. Okay, it has cells around it, plant cells, if you remember plant cells. So from here potassium will start moving inside during the daytime. Okay by using ATP. That means active transport will take place. So what happens? There is increased potassium inside the guard cells. That means the concentration has increased. So remember the process of osmosis, there is movement of water from lower to higher concentration. So what happens? Water from the surrounding areas will move inside because this is at lower concentration and there Lots of potassium ions here. So this has become highly concentrated. So movement of water molecules takes place from lower concentration to a higher concentration. Okay. So at night just the opposite will take place. Okay. The potassium ions will leak out of, of the guard cells and goes back to the cells around it. And then it becomes flaccid. Water will not be drawn inside. And then the cells will be, uh, the, sorry, the guard cells will become flaccid. And then it remains closed. Now next is the sugar concentration theory. Okay. Now according, that is the old theory. Old sugar concentration theory. Now during the daytime, the guard cells, they start photosynthesis. And what is the end product of photosynthesis? Glucose. Isn't it? The sugar that is produced during the process. What happens? There is excess of sugar now inside here what is there more of uh, sugar okay sugar is produced inside here so what happens again the concentration increases so again what happens water from the adjoining cells 
will go inside you. Now it is more or less the same thing. Okay? If it is the potassium ion concentration theory, what will happen? Potassium goes inside the guard cells using ATP, that is active transport takes place. There is movement. So what happens here? Uh, you know, uh, the concentration inside the guard cell becomes more. So if the concentration is more, osmosis will take place and water will move from outside to inside. Okay, the same thing for sugar. During the daytime, photosynthesis takes place, so sugar is produced. So as more and more sugar is produced, what happens to the concentration here? Concentration becomes more. If the concentration becomes more, then osmosis sets up. So water molecules from outside, okay, from outside the cells, from the adjoining cells will move inside the guard cells. And of course, the guard cells will become turgid and then leaving the stomata open okay so these are the two uh, theories about the opening and closing of stomata okay now if for any reason supposing there is less water in the soil okay and then there is less water reaching the guard cells okay so what will happen if there is less water naturally the guard cells will become flaccid so as a result what will happen if it becomes flaccid the stomata will close okay so i have uh, completed uh, till the op uh, the theories about the opening and closing of stomata okay so please go through here the process of photosynthesis we will discuss in the next upload. Hey.